Hey guys, as many of you know, I've been thinking about getting a home base, having a home base somewhere. How am I going to do that? What am I going to do? Ultimately, I know kind of what kind of building I want to make and house and structure, but that's a ways down the road. I've got to save money for that. So what I've been thinking I'd like to do more immediately is just plop down a travel trailer, get a cheap used travel trailer and plop it down somewhere. Or maybe depending on what kind of trailer I can find, maybe do some kind of cargo trailer, real simple conversion. Will is not a lawyer or real estate professional. This video covers his cursory research as of February 2018 regarding land in the Southwest region of the United States and should not be construed as advice. As you guys have seen, some people on YouTube have kind of just gone ahead and tried this without researching what the rules are and it's kind of come back to bite them. So. That's why I want to make this video is to say there are things people have got to consider. You know, number one, you want to see if there's any kind of HOA or anything that has authority over the property you're buying. Uh, that for me is just a complete non-starter. I'm not going to buy anything that has any kind of HOA considerations. The next thing is to see if there's any covenants or restrictions on the land. Uh, some of them may say that you have to do certain things, you can't do certain things. One covenant, for example, would be that you can't live in an RV on your property. For me, again, that's just not going to work. Uh, the next thing to kind of whittle it down to would be, okay, if you buy this piece of land, there's no HOA. They say you can live in an RV, but is there a requirement to build a house? If so, what's the time frame for the requirement? And if so, what are the building requirements? Like what size does it have to be? What kind of utility requirements are there on the piece of land? That can affect you whether you build a house or not. So generally what I've found is even property that does not require you to ever buy a house but does allow you to live in an RV, what I've found is that it still requires you to have a septic tank unless you're going to live on that land in an RV for 30 days or less. And again, some places say you can live there a big fat goose egg number of days per year in your RV. That's right. Even if you buy the land, you cannot live in your RV at all. Now, some places say you can live there in your RV up to 30 days without a septic tank or without a municipality water hookup, whether that be city, county, whatever. And even if you meet this criteria, even if you have a septic tank, which requires you to have at least an acre of land based on my research and under an acre you have to just do the city or county water, whatever's available. You have to do it if it's under an acre. There's no two ways about it. If you want to live on the land, whether it's in a house, a year to TP, a travel trailer or RV, whatever. Now the septic tank you can do if it's over an acre. Say you get all that water stuff straight. There's still time frame requirements a lot of times on the RV. They may say even with the septic tank or the municipality water hookup, you can only live in your RV half the year here. That's pretty typical. Sometimes they'll say two thirds of the year. That's also pretty typical. What I find very rare is that they will say you can live in your RV year round if you meet the requirement of having a septic tank if it's over an acre or if it's under an acre having the municipality water hookup. Of course, you can do that over an acre as well. It's just that under an acre, that's your only option. Now, what if the land does not even have a municipality water hookup? I'm playing whack-a-mole with ladybugs, by the way. I've got this infestation going here. What if they do not have municipal water available? So what you'll find in some of these places is they will say, during the time that it's not available, they will allow you to have an outhouse. In other words, when you buy this piece of land, since there's no municipal water available, you're allowed to use an outhouse until it becomes available, at which time you'll have to hook up to their water and pay their monthly extortion fee so that's not good for me because then i'm only looking at spending about half the year at this place so then i'm paying year round and i'm only using it half the year paying all that for water so that's kind of what i found is that i'm basically going to have to find a place over an acre that would allow me to have a septic tank and would allow me to stay year round in an rv so that's basically just just adding three or four thousand dollars on top of whatever the price of the land is, which has kind of led me to think that, you know, I'm just going to uh, find a bigger piece of land where I can more likely get away with whatever I want to do. And then I won't 
have to comply with all this stuff. In other words, yeah, I can get a tiny piece of land for a thousand bucks, you know, that's maybe quite likely under an acre. There's some places out there where you can get a pretty decent sized piece of acreage for not that much money, but it's still wide open and you can see what everybody's doing. So anything where you're getting into anything more wooded or private, it's going to have a bigger price tag. That's just the bottom line. But I'd rather possibly suffer the higher price tag in exchange for buying something really tiny and having to buy things I don't want, like a septic system. Because even if you get that tiny piece of land and the whole thing is all open all around you, as soon as you get there, you may live the rest of your life and not have neighbors, but next year they may all move in and be nosy and look at what you're doing and say, oh, well, he doesn't have, he lives in his RV and he does not have his black water hose going into the ground how's he disposing of waste and then they keep a closer eye and realize oh wow he's he's got some kind of compost pile that he's doing humanure on or what oh my god and they tell on you and then you know you can kind of see how the cards fall from there so that's kind of why i've been thinking about those are the hurdles hope you enjoyed this short video questions video requests ask will anything at gmail.com and i'll see you next time youtube